So let's try and remember uh, what what it is that I'm what I'm getting at is that unfortunately I, I view a lot of religions, if not all of them, as a cult, you know, to control you and, and to make you believe um, what it is they're trying to teach. Basically, it seems like they want everybody to be submissive. Now, I'll tell you about a situation real quickly that, that really disturbed me. And, and, and it should disturb anybody else that was there or anybody else that's gone through this. There was a lady at my job, and um, I won't say her name, but this lady at my job, beautiful woman, uh, just cared about everybody, loving. She was in the church, worshiped Jesus, everything. Um, she had caught cancer. Went to the doctors. Uh, I guess they did surgery, if I'm not uh, not mistaken, and it went away. Unfortunately, it came back, and it was uh, breast cancer. And sad to say, you know, it killed her. She died, and it was one of the it was one of the first people that I've known that was outside of my family of friends like that that I, that I really felt hurt hearing about them passing. I mean, so hurt that I, I had to go to the funeral. And um, so I go to the funeral and, you know, they got everybody there, the family. And, and again, remember, she comes from, from a Christian background, I, I believe. And either her family's deep in the church or they at least, you know, like most families claim God and claim Jesus, but I don't know if they really live it. But anyways, the preacher's there and... At the end of the funeral, whatever, after everybody's saying what they want to say about it, at the end of the funeral, the preacher's preaching. And the preacher says um, to everybody, she would have wanted you to accept Jesus in your life. Not to be sad that she's gone and that she's died, but to rejoice that she's in a better place, that she's in heaven that now is her time to go and that Jesus was calling her, okay? Immediately, when I heard that, it made me mad. Now, I got respect. I'm not here to yell at nobody, scream at no one. So obviously I kept my mouth shut, kept my feelings to myself, said my own piece to her, you know, kept her moving. But I have a problem. You need to ask yourself, why would a preacher tell you that your family member or this lady that I'm talking about died from cancer that can be healed from herbs that come from the ground that the God he's claiming created. Because even in the Bible it says that herbs are the heal healing of the nation. So even in the Bible it claims you should, you should use herbs. So why is this preacher telling you that she's gone and she's dead because this was her time, and God's calling her. No. And I told people later on, I went back, no. Nobody at the age of 40, 50, 30, 20 should be dying of cancer or of any disease. And something's wrong when a preacher tells you that this is God's plan. Because if God put herbs on the ground to heal this disease, instead of saying that God's calling her, why weren't you there as a preacher while she was sick, give her God's food to heal her. So that way she can continue to do God's work instead of just die off. Leave a family to mourn, friends to mourn. And now this preacher is using this death to try and win more souls over to his cause or his religion. We in the funeral and, and he's doing altar call telling people to come get saved so they don't burn in hell. This is amazing to me that people can believe there's a hell that God has allowed you to go to if you don't accept him, but he's an all-loving God. But, you know, back to that, it just really offends me and makes me mad when I, I hear of people, kids, young women, young men, people in their 20s, people in their 30s that die of diseases that they didn't need to die of. Uh, people that know me personally know that I, at 17, I had a son. His name was Elijah Malik Gutierrez. And if he was alive today, he would be eight years old. 
you know. Unfortunately, my first baby mother had problems. I believe it was stomach problems, pains. Called the doctor up. Said, um, told, told the doctor that I'm not feeling good, something's wrong, I don't know what's going on. She went to the doctor, they gave her some medicine. Came back home, took the medicine. Right after she took the medicine, she began to go into labor. She began to have the problems. So she had to go to the hospital, and they had to basically, she had to have the baby. The baby was coming out. Right after she took this medicine, now she's five months pregnant. Baby ain't supposed to come out yet. The doctor tells me, you know, we're sorry to tell you this, but more likely your son won't even make it out alive. And if he does, he won't be living for long. So, you know, we're young, we're 17. I mean, we we just got out of high school, um, literally. I mean, it's still the summertime. I don't even think school started back. So we just got out of high school. So my son is born and beats all the odds. He's living, doing good. I mean, obviously he's preemie, premature, but he's doing good. Doctor says, okay, well, couple of days, we got to give him these fluids, we got to give him these different drugs, boom, boom, boom. I'm a, I'm a child myself. I don't know what they're doing to him. I have to put faith in him. Next thing I know, my son does a complete 180, and he just slowly dies. I watch my son pretty much die in front of my eyes. And so we have a funeral. And, and, and what, what are the preachers there saying? Even my youth pastor that I love to this day, I got nothing but love for him, but what are they saying just like the other funeral? He's in a better place now. That God called him. He's one of God's angels. Now, if you sit back from a distance, you know what I'm saying, and you look at this from outside the box, take yourself away for a minute. Don't you see the cult? Don't you see the brainwashing? Don't you see what's going on? Now, what does the government want you to do? When that woman catches breast cancer and dies, when my son is born early because of some drugs and dies, when your family member catches AIDS and dies, catches whatever and dies, what is it that the government wants you to do, the people that are in power and, and control the money? What do they want you to say? Oh, this was God's will. God called them. It's their time to go. Instead of marching up to that White House, marching up to them pharmaceutical companies that are killing people, the FDA, Marching up there and saying, why did you kill my son? Why did you kill my brother, my sister, my friend? But they don't want that. That's why the preachers are here. Not all of them. Some of them have good intentions, but that's why a lot of them are here to cause confusion. To calm you down. Calm down. I know I just killed your sister, your baby mother, your brother, your father. But it's all right. Because God's in control. And that's what they want you to believe. Because as long as God's in control... God you believe in, who's not in control? You. And who do you give the power to? People you can't see. You know, people behind the preachers, the politicians, the lobbyists, the pharmaceutical companies. So in essence, you are being controlled and you're being lied to. And it's sad. Because every time I hear about someone dying, people at my job talk about it. Every time I hear someone's grandmother's having cancer, I tell everyone, they don't have to be. But people look at me and say, well... This is how it is, Paco. That's just life. No, it's not. As long as you keep accepting it, then that's what's going to be. But when you start eating better food, start drinking better water, better fluids, start opening up your mind, you stand back, stop believing everything you hear, things start to become clear. You feel me? Things start to become a lot more clear. You can become come to a peace, but now it's about what are we going to do with that? What are we going to do with that God inside of us? We got to teach others and teach others and teach others and raise our kids to teach and teach their kids and teach their kids so we can overcome the real evil and the real devil, which is politicians, the, the bankers, the big money makers. That's what we have to do. So I, I'm pretty sure there's much more I can get into. I can't come up with it right now, but um, I really hope that I touch someone. You know, it's a blessing to be able to bless people and a blessing to, to learn from people like Dr. Sebi. But peace to y'all. Y'all have a good day. All right.